my name is uh, Johan Blijdor. Um, I'm one of the founders of the company Blue M. Uh, we as a company make uh, oral care products, as you can see on this picture. All our products are based on the same principle, uh, the principle of slow releasing oxygen. For this technique, we use uh, sodium perborate as a donor for the oxygen. And sodium perborate is also used for bleaching. And uh, usually it's used in a very aggressive way and in a high quantity of oxygen. But the way we use it is that uh, we make a complex molecule and that molecule releases oxygen in a very low quantity, but in a constant flow. So our concept is slow releasing stable oxygen. So it's safe to use in a very low quantity. And uh, we have, we, we, we've made this product line out of it. We make toothpaste, mouthwash for daily care, for maintenance, to control the bacteria, the biofilm, and to have and maintain healthy, healthy teeth and gum. But we also make medical device products like, uh, for example, the oxygen fluids and the oral gel. Minas will tell more about this at Tatjana, but uh, we make, so we make uh, products for the consumer for daily use, and we make products for the uh, professional for the use in the clinic. Um, this is our team. Uh, on the left side, you see my father. He's the founding father of uh, Blue M. He's an, he was an oral surgeon because he just passed away, uh, but uh, he was an oral surgeon uh, who has been working with the oral gel for about 25 years. And he was a pioneer in uh, the use of oxygen as we use it as Blue M in the oral surgery and dentistry. It's me, this is my business partner, uh, and together with Natalie, we founded Blue M uh, back in 2009. This is our CFO. Together we form the board and we make all the decisions for the web. Our mission is to make uh, a difference in oral care. In dentistry, dentists use a lot of chemicals like chlorhexidine, natrium hypochlorite, and all other kinds of products. And in our philosophy, uh, you should use more body friendly products like oxygen. So our use is to make a difference in oral care, use less chemi chemicals and use more body friendly products. This is how our technique works, like uh, by uh, releasing oxygen, you can increase the oxygen pressure in your mouth and also in your soft tissue. And with in the increase of the uh, oxygen, you can start the wound healing process. For example, uh, in this slide here, this was uh, this slide we took from uh, research done by Jamil Shibli. He measured the oxygen pressure in the soft tissue, like in the healthy situation, in the mucositis situation and in the peri-implantitis situation. And then once the disease gets worse, the oxygen pressure is going down. So with more anaerobic bacteria, less uh, vascularization. So the worse the disease gets, the less oxygen is in, the, is in the tissue. And with our products, you can increase this oxygen pressure and you can get the uh, soft tissue more healthy. This is our protocol, how you should use our products, for example, in the treatment of periodontitis and periimplantitis. You can get, you can find these protocols in our website. Our company is based in the Netherlands. We manufacture our products there, but we distribute now to more than 65 countries. So we're expanding really fast. We have a poster competition going on. It's almost finished. Uh, the date uh, where all the posters have to be in is end of this month. So you have two or three more weeks. But um, um, with this poster competition comes a great prize. The best five posters will be uh, invited by us to come as our PRP guest to Europe, Perio, and Copenhagen this summer. So if you have a nice case with Luem, please submit it and uh, you will maybe you win a trip to Copenhagen. Um, I think, Minas, now it's uh, a good time for you to start your lecture. Thank you, Johan. Just to share my oh. screen. Yeah. I think you need to stop sharing your, your screen right, first. Sure. I stopped, sir. Atatiana is also online, I see. I will make her. Uh, co-host as well as well.
Good morning, Tatiana. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning from Brazil for all. You sleep well? Very early now. Yes, I'm eh? <laughs> sleep well. <laughs> it's now four in the morning, right? Yes, 4.35 here. Uh, thank you for getting up so early. <laughs> yes, no problem for me. Good morning. Good morning. So, can I start? You can start because we're ready. Okay. Uh, let me. Yes, yes, yeah. Okay. Do you see now my PowerPoint? Yes, you can press, uh, I think you have to put the uh, presentation mark. Sorry? Oh, no, it's good, it's good. It, it's good? Okay. Uh, so, good morning, good afternoon in uh, India. Uh, I'm Dr. Minas Leventis. Uh, thank you, Johan, uh, and uh, thank the whole period department in India for the invitation. I'm going to talk to you about how I use uh, oxygen. Mainly, I will focus on the prevention of uh, preimplantitis in everyday cases. So this is me. I have a Master of Sciences and I have a PhD in uh, oral implantology and in oral surgery. Um, also, I'm a fellow and a diplomate of the International Congress of Oral Implantologists. Uh, the last years I live and I work in uh, central London in uh, the UK. And uh, at the same time, we try to do lots of research uh, with many colleagues around the world in many universities. And also at my university in Athens, Greece, I'm also a researcher and a clinical fellow where we do many different uh, clinical projects and uh, research projects. So we try to not only do webinars and uh, lectures, we try to publish all our findings. The last uh, 20, 15 years, we have managed to publish more than uh, 30 papers. Most of them have to do with uh, bone grafting, with oral surgery, with implants. And uh, many years now, the last uh, six, seven years, we try to use uh, oxygen. We try to stop using other products like uh, chlorexidine because we find that, as we're going to show to you, that uh, oxygen has uh, many benefits without having any real side effects. And uh, it's uh, something that we can use not just uh, during the surgery, but uh, because whatever we do in dentistry, whatever we do in uh, implantology and oral surgery, it's a puzzle of different uh, perioperative uh, processes. So oxygen has a part in every process. We can use it before the surgery to establish a clean, healthy oral environment. We can use it during the surgery, and then we can use it every day after the finishing the treatment to get long-term stability and to control the bacteria uh, in the long term, which is the key to keep our successful results in the long term. I use uh, oxygen nowadays when I try to treat perimplantitis, although this is not my main uh, clinical objective, but uh, I will try to show to you what we are doing in cases like uh, this one, where we have this uh, perio problem around this implant, which was placed uh, by a colleague a few years ago. First of all, we have to control the bacteria. So we start uh, uh, addressing to the patient uh, the problem. And uh, before doing any surgical intervention, what we need to do the first months, of course, uh, as you know, is to control the biofilm and to try to remove as much of, of the infection as possible. So what I'm doing is in the office, uh, apart from the instructions to the patient, I rinse the pockets with uh, oxygen solution. So what I'm doing, I'm using the Blue M gel and the Blue M mouthwash. In this case, this is the Blue M mouthwash. And you see that with a syringe, we can rinse the pockets. 
And this is how it works. After rinsing, when the liquid gets in contact with uh, blood or with the biofilm, with uh, saliva, instantly it starts releasing a slow, stable pace of oxygen, as we can see here in this picture. So this oxygen is killing bacteria, is uh, disinfecting, it's uh, removing any inflammatory or necrotic cells from the area, and it will work there for around 10, 15 to 20 minutes. So you can see it's a local application. And then apart from the fluid, from the mouthwash, we can use uh, the gel. What I'm doing is I apply the gel on the area and then with uh, the floss or with the interdental brushes, I clean mechanically. And also I insert the gel uh, in between the teeth and inside the soft tissues as of course, as far as I can go. So the oxygen has this effect. It's getting released in a very nice, uh, safe, slow pace for up to 20 minutes. This is how it works. And because it has no side effects, it's absolutely safe. It doesn't affect the normal flora. It doesn't stain the teeth. It uh, has no allergic reactions. We can use it in the office the way I'm showing here. Uh, and then we can give it to the patient to use it every day at home as many times, uh, two, three, four times a day. It doesn't harm in order to control the bacteria. That's the first uh, important thing we have to do whenever we try to treat uh, periodontitis or perimplantitis. After a few months, when we try to keep the bacteria under control, uh, of course, uh, as possible. Uh, in cases like this one, maybe we have to open a flap to, to see the problem, to see the, the bone defect and the infection. Like in this case, I opened a, a small flap. I didn't want to detach the papilla from around the restorations. So I tried to keep it a local flap. And as you can see now, this is the bone defect with some very small specific uh, degranulation bursts, like we can see here. I tried to go inside the bone, clean it, uh, debride it uh, from all the soft inflammatory cystic uh, tissues. This is the key, we need a clean bone. And then, as you know, we have to clean the surface of the implant. Uh, there are many different protocols, of course, that anyone can follow uh, to treat uh, cases like this one. And then we need to achieve a very clean implant surface and uh, of course, a very clean bone defect. Many protocols, everyone can use uh, the protocol that works in uh, his hands to, to address such cases. The key, what I'm going to show to you is that when I do my surgery, uh, when I do cases like this one, or mainly when I do extractions or other oral surgery procedures, I use the gel uh, during the surgery and I place for five minutes, 10 minutes, I leave the gel inside the bone defect after I have cleaned the bone uh, as good as possible. And why I'm doing this? I'm doing this because this gel will release oxygen and as we said, this will have some uh, disinfection uh, effect, but also oxygen will promote uh, locally the, the healing. So oxygen will promote the collagen uh, synthesis, will promote with lactoferrin that the gel has inside new bone production. It will help to create uh, new blood vessels. And also this oxygen will remove from the area, and this is also important and we need this, any necrotic tissue, it will kill bacteria. It will have an anti-inflammatory effect. And on top, when the wound will start healing, it will promote the re-epithelialization of the wound. So you can see we have many different uh, benefits from using those products, this gel with uh, the oxygen, the lactoferrin, all the factors that uh, uh, has this gel. After leaving the gel 
around uh, five, 10 minutes, doesn't matter. If it's a bit longer, I rinse it with sterile saline. And then depending uh, our protocols, we graft the area, we can use a membrane, suture the flap. And this is another key point that I want to share with you. After suturing my intraoral wounds, always immediately post-op, I cover them with the blue and gel to release the oxygen. And then uh, as a part of my post-operative instructions, always I give this gel to the patient and I instruct the patient to use the gel at least three days a day at home, as long as this uh, wound line there uh, are healing, so that this gel, what it's going to do, it will keep under control uh, the bacteria. And also at the same time, it will help the epithelialization and the, and the healing of, the, of this wound. In this case, we had uh, a quite uh, an adequate result, as we can see on those x-rays. This is three months post-op. It's going well. And uh, after that, it's very important to monitor the cases, as we know, to visit the hygienist in a regular basis. And uh, with oxygen, we have a wide range of products. We have the mouthwashes, the foam, the gel, uh, the toothpaste. So we have a very good choice of high quality products to give them to the patient so that the patient will keep as control as possible uh, the bacteria, which is the key to maintain the long-term success. But uh, you know very well as periodontists that it's very difficult to really to treat successfully those uh, cases. Uh, it's difficult many times to treat periplantitis, to treat periodontitis. So in uh, medicine, in surgery, in dentistry, the best idea is to try to prevent problems and uh, in implantology, in order to prevent problems, we need to fully understand uh, what, we are what we are doing, what we are talking about. Because when we are dealing with implants, we have to understand that it is a unique complex system of hard tissues, soft tissues. So we have the human tissues, we have the mechanical components, and then all this constantly is surrounded by this oral uh, bacteria and the biofilm, which is very, very important. There are critical elements whenever we do implants. We have always to understand that to consider those critical anatomical and functional elements of the system. We have the 3D implant positioning, which is very, very important. Then we have other factors like the interface, the hard tissues, the soft tissues, the whole topography of the soft tissues around the implant. The materials are very important and we must never forget the biofilm. And why this is uh, so important? It's important because all these elements are connected. If we have a problem or we haven't controlled or uh, planned or executed properly one of those elements, then we'll get the problem and the problem will spread to all the other elements and it will, very, will be very difficult to, to fix it and control it. It makes sense. We have to understand those uh, elements because we every day see cases like uh, this one. This was done by a quite uh, experienced uh, clinician. Uh, this patient came to my clinic and he asked me if I can restore this uh, implant. But immediately we have to understand what's happening and we have to understand all the problems that this fixture has even before fitting the crown. We have to start with the 3D implant positioning. This is absolutely wrong. And you see how this affects all the other elements meaning that we don't have any bone bacalli. We don't need to raise a flap to understand that there is no bone bacalli. And for this reason, there are no soft tissues. Look how poor is the topography, the quality and the quantity of the soft tissues at this critical area. 
and then it's almost impossible to restore this implant with a good uh, functional and biological sound crown without having here constant bacteria and biofilm. So you can see already how many bacteria we have here. And it will be very difficult to make a nice crown that it will be clean and healthy. So by understanding what we are doing and which elements are very important to do successful implantology, then we'll be able, instead of doing cases like this one that will only have problems in the near future, to try all our everyday cases to look somehow like this case, where the implant is at the correct 3D positioning, where we have around the implant very good quality and quantity of hard and soft tissues, and where the topography and the anatomy of the soft tissues is correct in order to keep away and control the bacteria. Everything is related. I will try to talk to you about the bacteria and in my case is how I keep them away and uh, under control with the use of the Blue M oxygen products and why the soft tissues are very important for the success and the long-term stability. And the soft tissues are very important because we need to have correct anatomy. We need to have a correct anatomy regarding the cervical profile of our implant uh, restorations. And we need to have also a correct emergence profile of the soft tissues, because this is related to how we can control the bacteria. And this is related to perimplantitis or perimplant mucositis. So we need to know how to work, how to condition, how to reconstruct the soft tissues around the correctly placed implants, because it's not just that uh, it looks uh, much better, but because it has a biological uh, meaning, importance. And first of all, we have to say that we have to have a correct cervical profile. When we're talking about the cervical profile, we're talking about the anatomy of the soft tissues at the contour level, at the zenith of our restoration. So this is the cervical profile when we are talking about the cervical profile. And this needs to have a specific anatomy, like in this case, so we have to, to reconstruct the soft tissues in the proper way in order to move this cervical profile, like in this case here, as far away from the implant platform as possible. And this is important because where is this cervical profile? We have the plaque control zone. So the more away the profile, the cervical profile is from our platform, the far, far away we have the bacteria, the biofilm from the interface. So if we have a correct soft tissue anatomy, then we'll get a correct anatomy of the crown that here will be where the bacteria will accumulate. So it's gonna be very easy every day with uh, simple uh, measures for the patient to clean disturb the biofilm and to remove the bacteria. With his toothbrush, it's very easy to go here with the toothbrush and remove the biofilm. And with our floss or the interdental brush, and always I tell my patients to apply some blue M gel before using the interdental brush, it will be very easy to go in between the teeth and the implant crown and remove from this area the biofilm. So we can see that a correct soft tissue anatomy means less bacteria and it means less problems with inflammation in the future. Again, if we see those uh, drawings, we can see here a correct anatomy, a correct emergence profile and the correct cervical profile of uh, implant restoration. So here we have the plaque control zone, very easy to clean it and keep away the bacteria from the interface and the platform of the implant. 
And in this case, where we have a very narrow cervical profile, we get a restoration that looks like a mushroom. So it has all those big undercuts, which is a food trap. And most importantly, here is the contour, the cervical profile of the soft tissues. And this is where we have the accumulation of the bacteria under the crown. So you can see that it gets much more difficult to keep it clean and to remove the biofilm from this area. At the same time, we have to think about the emergence profile. This is the emergence profile of the soft tissues of the crown. And the emergence profile is important because if we have a sound emergence profile, that means that we have the correct biological width. And also we have thick, good uh, quality and anatomy of soft tissues. And this, why it's important? It's very important because we will give space to the biological width, we'll give space to the soft tissues to build this foundation properly. Because as we know very well from many uh, preclinical and clinical studies, we shall need at least one and a half to two millimeters for the connective tissue zone, deep close to the platform. Then we will need the junctional epithelium zone, which is at least one and a half to two millimeters. This is the junctional epithelium zone. And at the periphery of the emergence profile, where is the cervical profile, we will have around half to one millimeter for the plaque control zone. That again, I have to point out that this anatomically for all our implant cases is where we need to locate the plaque control area. And what happens if we have correct anatomy of the soft tissues, we will have correct anatomy of the restorations. And this means that the patient will be able every day efficiently to clean them. In the contrary, we have a research that tell us that 75% around of the cases affected by perimplantitis were associated with poor prosthesis design and inadequate plaque control. So we see how everything makes sense. So we see how important it is to place correctly our implant and then to reconstruct correctly the hard and soft tissues around the uh, interface of the implant. And uh, to do this, of course, we need to know and understand that each tooth at the, if we take a section of each different uh, uh, group of uh, teeth, we see that at the cervical level, where is the zenith of the soft tissues, we have a different anatomy. While when we place implants, we have a circular fixture. This is the interface of our implant. So you can see that here we have a narrow circular mechanical uh, anatomy, while you can see how different is the anatomy of the teeth and the soft tissues around the teeth. So let's see how we can try to mimic nature, what we can do with our implants. What I'm going to show to you is that I tried to do this using anatomical customized healing abutments in all my implant cases at the surgical stage or at the restorative stage. You will see that this means less procedures, improved aesthetics, and much better biological response and better soft tissue topography. We have many nice papers. It's a hot topic. You can find nowadays very good studies showing in a nice way how anatomical customized abutments can give us much better results. And at the same time, in many different stages of my treatments, always I use oxygen. I use the Blue M product in many ways to help the healing and at the same time to disinfect and control the bacteria. And um, of course, in medicine, we can find a plethora of uh, many papers explaining and analyzing how oxygen is a crucial part of every uh, healing procedure for the soft tissues and the hard tissues. 
but also nowadays we have uh, nice papers uh, about uh, blue M products, how these are compared to chlorhexidine, how they are effective and how they can help the healing of the heart and the soft tissues. I will share with you a couple of uh, uh, everyday implant cases. I'll try to show to you what I'm doing every day to common uh, clinical scenarios. Like in this case, we have a vertical fracture. The patient uh, ate something or maybe he's grinding his teeth. In any case, we have this premolar. It has no restorations. However, the patient managed to break it completely. We have this vertical fracture. This is the tooth. And here is the two-dimensional X-ray. What we need to do is, of course, we need to do an atraumatic extraction. Sometimes it's quite easy. Sometimes the extraction is the most difficult part of our treatments. So my point is what I tell my students, my colleagues always try to learn very good extractions because the extraction is the first surgical treatment you will provide to your patient. And the less invasive you are, the better you will keep the surrounding soft and hard tissues and the better healing you will get, meaning the next steps will be easier and easier. So if we manage to remove the tooth with, without even touching or injuring the hard and soft tissues, this will heal nicely and will give us much better results than if we damage and we have here a big defect. We try to control this. And you can see here, this is the tooth that I removed. You can see how it was broken. So unfortunately, there was nothing we could do to save and restore this tooth. So it's nice to see the, how the crown looks from an occlusal point of view. What's the anatomy of the crown of the tooth? And what's the anatomy here of the crown of the root at the at this level, at the cervical level, and as we go down to the apex. So we have to figure out that teeth have different anatomies and different anatomies at different levels. And this is important because it will help us to create and condition the correct soft tissue topography. To start with, the most important part after the extraction is to place the implant at the correct position. If we won't place the implant at the correct position or at the correct depth, then we'll have big problems. To do this, of course, there are many ways. Uh, we can have a wax up with a stand. We can have a digital workflow with a surgical guide. We can use other systems. In any case, we have to do something to take some measures that will help us to place the implant at the correct positioning. So you can see that we have to follow some lines. The implant has to be on a line that theoretically imaginary connects the occlusal lines of the adjacent teeth. So you can see that this line here connects this line to this line. So this is where the platform of the implant has to be regarding a bacopalatal aspect. And of course, it has to be in the middle, it must not be very close to the adjacent teeth. And this is quite difficult the more we move to posterior teeth. You see that when it's a posterior tooth because of the parallax effect and our eyes in 3D, when we go freehand, it's a bit tricky to place the implant correctly. So we have to place the implant at the correct position. This is the implant placed. I did some uh, dual zone uh, grafting. I like to use uh, granulate synthetics. Uh, of course, everyone can use any type of bone grafting material that works in his hands. And what I'm going to do now that I placed my implant, I have to be sure that the implant is at the correct depth. And then I have to do something to seal this and at the, at the same time to guide and keep the anatomy. The best idea, what I'm doing now, instead, let's say, of placing just a stock abutment and with some stitches just to hold the, the gums around it, 
I prefer in every case to try to fabricate a customized anatomical healing abutment, something like this one. Many ways to do it. I like to do it chair side using a stop titanium cylinder inside and composite around it. So I make my customized anatomical abutment. And what I want to do is that, first of all, I want to make the anatomy of this abutment as close to the anatomy of the tooth. So that's my tooth. That's the crown from the occlusal view. But the anatomy at this level, at the cervical level, it's not like that. It's different. It's like that. So I want to copy this anatomy of the tooth. And that's what I'm doing. I'm preparing for this case an anatomical abutment that from the occlusal view at the level of the zenith of the gums, it has an anatomy that's very close to the anatomy of the tooth. So that's what we try to do. Extraction, we place the implant, we graft it. And to seal this and to hold the space underneath and to condition the soft tissues, I fit onto my implant this anatomical customized abutment. So you see how nicely it fits onto the implant and it seals the blood clot and the blood clot underneath. Apart from the cervical profile, we have to create a correct emergence profile. So this is the anatomical abutment that I used for this case. So you can see the anatomy here of the emergence profile. And again, if we give to our anatomical abutment the correct emergence profile, and when we fit this abutment at the time that we place the implant, it means that we will guide the healing in a correct way and we will guide the healing to create from the day one all the correct space and anatomy and topography of the soft tissues. And again, when, why we need this anatomy? We need it because we have to create the correct biological width. So we need the two millimeters of the connective tissue zone here, two millimeters of the junctional epithelium zone. and on top, again, we need to locate the plaque control area. Understanding this, why we need this space, this anatomy, and uh, this space for the zones, one and a half to two millimeters for each zone, then we will understand how deep we have to place the implant. So in every case, and especially in immediate placement cases, we need to use a caliper or a probe. This is the caliper that I'm using to measure the, the depth. So th that we have to know from the platform of the implant, which is down there, to the zenith of the soft tissues, we need to have four millimeters. And we need to have always four millimeters in order to have the space for the biological width. If we don't have four millimeters, if we place our caliper or our probe and we see that the platform of the implant to the zenith of the soft tissues is two millimeters or three millimeters, we have to go deeper. Because if we don't go deeper, then we will have bone remodeling, we will have bone loss around the crestal level of the implant because the body will try to find those four millimeters. So that's the basic concept. This is exactly what I'm doing, how I finish my surgery for immediate placement cases. So you can see that in an hour, I did the extraction. I placed at the correct position in my implant. I fabricated my customized healing abutment. I grafted, I fitted the abutment and just some kind of suturing here just to hold the soft tissues around the abutment. Now we have we did our job and now we need the body to heal and we need to help the body we need to assist the biology to give us now a good result we have a wound now and this wound means high metabolic activity of the cells that means it needs oxygen 
We need now the oxygen because all of those areas here around my abutment, although it's a small wound, but in any case, I want to avoid any infection and I want to accelerate and I want to enhance the healing of the soft tissues because I will need here a very nice secondary intention healing. I need no inflammation at all and I need very good regeneration of collagen and uh, new epithelial cells. And on top, I need to control the bacteria because in the mouth, everything has to do with bacteria. That's how I do it because I say to my patient not to brush for a few days uh, till the gap there closes with epithelium. We have to avoid brushing. So instead, every day they can use the gel. The gel again will release my oxygen and the oxygen will have as I mentioned, all those beneficial, uh, profound effects for the healing and for controlling the biofilm. By doing this, so by doing a clean, good surgery, and then it's not enough, by controlling the bacteria and enhancing the soft tissue healing, you can see that we get a very good result. This is after 10 days, you can see how clean is everything, how clean are the stitches without brushing and what nice soft tissue healing we have already after 10 days. We continue, continue doing this every day. And if everything goes well, after three months, we can see that by doing nothing, just by waiting, we have a very good healing. You can see already how nice thick and healthy, no infection at all, no inflammation, nice topography and nice quality of soft tissues we have around the abutment. So now it's the time that I remove my abutment for the first time after three months. And so nicely everything is ready. You can see here the anatomy of the cervical profile. That's the cervical profile of the soft tissues. And inside you can see the anatomy of the emergence profile that's what we get because I used a granulate material for dual zone grafting, meaning that on purpose, I place the material inside the soft tissues. I get this popcorn effect. It doesn't bother me because it's a synthetic and absorbable, meaning it will be replaced by connective tissue in the next months. And the material with the healing abutment, with the oxygen, helped me to have a result like this one. We have the anatomy ready. We have the cervical anatomy ready. The anatomy of the emergence profile is perfect. And at the same time, look how nicely this healing abutment and the oxygen kept the whole topography of the soft tissues as close to nature as possible. So this is some kind of protocol that everyone can implement in cases with uh, immediate uh, implant placement, where of course we don't provide the patient a provisional crown, like in posterior cases, but instead we can use a customized healing abutment with some dual zone grafting and the oxygen to get a result like that. And then everything is very simple, very easy. We just need to duplicate uh, impression post, take our impression, and then the lab will make a very nice CAD CAM titanium milled uh, abutment, a zirconia crown. And the important is that the crown will have a proper anatomy, an anatomy that is the anatomy that we gave with the healing abutment. And it is the anatomy that we try to just to keep in the area. That's what we did, simple. And you can see the crown what a nice contour the crown has. And this is the cut cam design of the crown. After fitting the crown, this is immediately after fitting the crown, we can get a very good result and it will be very easy for the patient to keep it clean by using the toothbrush and the floss or the interdental brushes. This is the whole concept. We have to be careful with the extraction, with the disinfection, how we will seal the immediate placement area. And 
we can get a very good result. And most importantly, the cervical profile and the emergence profile, because this, again, I have to point out again that this is where we will keep the bacteria zone. And this is what will help us to avoid inflammation in the future. Because the key is to understand the anatomy of the soft tissues. And this is how we will keep the soft tissues uh, clean. We have published uh, those concepts. Uh, I can uh, give you the link. I can email to you the paper where a few months ago uh, we have published what we are discussing now. I will show you another case, how we can do exactly the same um, when we have not now a, an immediate placement uh, scenario. We have an area where the extraction, extraction have been done a few months ago. It's a good result. It's not very bad, but however, you can see that there is some uh, resorption. There is some distortion here of the vestibule. Here is the our vestibule. So it's not very difficult, but again, we have to be very careful and we can give a perfect result like that, even in cases where the tooth has been already removed. So what I'm doing, I try to keep standardized all my procedures uh, in my everyday work. So again, what we need to do, the first thing we need to do is to position the implant at the ideal as possible 3D positioning regarding the bacolingual position, regarding the position in the mesial distal aspect and regarding the depth. We have to respect this. So first of all, we have to position the implant at the correct depth and at the correct position. And then I use again any kind of peak or titanium cylinder because I don't want here to place a stock, small, narrow healing abutment. I want to guide the healing of the soft tissues. So I need the cervical kit. You can do a CAD CAM abutment. You can uh, fabricate the abutment uh, uh, freehand. Uh, you can have your technician to make your healing abutment many different ways. What I'm doing is I'm using this system that has this system here with ready anatomical positions. I choose the position that fits the anatomy of the specific case. And with my temporary abutment and with composite, with this system, chair side in 10 minutes, I fabricate the specific anatomical customized abutment that I need for my case. Now, Every time I connect or I disconnect uh, an abutment from my implant, I need to disinfect the area and I need to use the oxygen gel to avoid any infection and to avoid any problems with the soft tissues and uh, the bone. Because we know we see it clinically and we have uh, some uh, studies many years now, that we see that when we do this, the whole time we place an abutment, then we place a provisional crown, many connections, many disconnections. This might give us problem. This might uh, sometimes make us lose some bone or have a problem with the soft tissues. Because when we do this, when we disconnect and connect something from the interface of the platform, first of all, somehow we damage the epithelium that tries to attached there. And also we get saliva and bacteria inside the platform of the implant. So that's why before I place any kind of prosthetic component, if this is an abutment like this one, if it is a stock abutment, if it is a final crown, always I place a small amount of the blue M oxygen gel. And I fit this because I want the oxygen to go deep inside the connection of the fixture to disinfect and control the bacteria in this very sensitive area. So here I did the same. I placed my implant. And because now I want to reconstruct, I want to expand the soft tissues and I want to uh, generate this uh, favorable anatomy that I want for my soft tissues, 
That's what I'm doing. I fit the abutment, I torque it, I close the access hole, and I just reposition now backally around the profile of the abutment, the soft tissues, and I hold there the soft tissues with a few stitches. That's the occlusal view. So you can see already how this is expanded around the abutment. And now I want the stitches to stay clean. I want the suture lines to heal without infection, without inflammation, without bacteria, and with good healing. And I want also this area here to heal quickly uh, by secondary intention. To do this, I need uh, support. I need my oxygen. So after the surgery and every day, I say to the patient to place here the blue M oxygen because the oxygen will assist and promote the healing. Again, to remind you what is going to happen, it will help new blood vessels, new cell proliferation, bacteria defense. The oxygen will help me to get good collagen, good new epithelium, because we have this metabolic demand from the cells and the oxygen, if we apply it every day, it will help the soft tissue healing enormously. Another important aspect in oral surgery is that we have to keep the stitches free of bacteria. In surgery, a big problem with postoperative infection is that the bacteria like to accumulate on the sutures and this can lead to postoperative infections. So what I'm doing in any oral surgery procedure, like this one, always I want to keep the surface of the stitches free of bacteria. We know this from uh, surgery, and this is another important uh, factor why I use not chlorhexidine anymore, why I use uh, oxygen to keep the bacteria away from, the, from my sutures. Many nice papers to read all this. And you can see again in this case, after three months, this is for the first time that the patient uh, will have the abutment removed. So I open here my access hole. I unscrew the anatomical abutment. You see, I try to avoid many connections and disconnections. So one disconnection here, you see what a beautiful result we have, correct emergence profile and very beautiful cervical profile. That's my cervical profile. And this is not only beautiful, but it's also biologically sound. And this is our protocol, quite simple. And with one surgery here, we place the implant and with the same surgery from day one, we regenerate the soft tissues at the same time. And again, as uh, I mentioned, this is also the biological importance why we need the correct anatomy. Now everything is very simple. No more surgery, no more pain, no more injections. We just need to make the way we work a duplicate impression post. So the impression post will uh, register the, some gingival anatomy. We take our impression and then we need the lab with a CAD CAM design to mimic the anatomy of the soft tissues that we have created. So we can see here the CAD CAM technology will give us an anatomical customized uh, titanium abutment to follow the anatomy of the soft tissues. And on top, we'll make a cat cam milled zirconia crown. We get a very beautiful and biologically sound restoration. So that's the key point. The restoration, you can see that will follow the emergence profile of the impression post. And this is exactly the emergence profile of the customized anatomical healer. So we create the soft tissues with the oxygen and with the anatomical abutment, they heal. And when everything is ready, we just duplicate the anatomy and the lab technician will just follow what we have created. And this will give us not only aesthetically pleasing results, even in posterior cases, but will give us very good 
soft tissue topography will give us very good soft tissues. And most importantly, it will give us a very good emergence profile and very good cervical profile. Always, we have to disinfect our components. We have to disinfect the soft tissues and we have to disinfect the connection, the platform. I'm using no more chlorexidine. I like to use oxygen that has no side effects at all. And then I can do the same even at the second stage. So in this case, I didn't place uh, a customized abutment at uh, implant uh, placement. This patient came to me after the healing of the implant is done. So you can see here what uh, we don't have a very good ideal anatomy of the soft tissues. We need to make it a bit better. So I uncover the implants. I have to remove this uh, bone from the cover screws to find the implants. And then I will not place simple stock healing abutments. I can try to do something better. So again, I will generate uh, my profile of the soft tissues. I will condition the profile. And how I will do this? The same thing with customized abutments and with oxygen. I made my abutments. I polished my abutments. I place oxygen over the threads. And then I just fit the abutments, reposition the soft tissues uh, backally. And you can see already how they expand. Uh, as periodontists, maybe here you would uh, prefer also to support this even better with a small uh, connective tissue graft. And now we wait for the healing. And in order to assist again the healing, enhance and speed up the healing, and also here I want to avoid any infection and I want to have quick secondary intention healing. Again, the same protocol. You can see that I keep standardized my, my procedures to avoid any surprises. Blue M gel. And even immediately, you can see here the little bubbles of the oxygen because this for the next 10, 15, 20 minutes, as long as it will stay there, it will release oxygen in a very uh, safe and stable manner. So again, we can have a very nice result. So from a quite atrophic ridge with such concepts, we can enhance uh, the topography of our soft tissues and then we are ready now to prepare two restorations that from a functional and biological point of view, they will be quite good, much better than if here we had two narrow cylindrical emergence profiles. And because now we have very good soft tissues and good anatomy, it will be easy to control the bacteria and the patient to keep clean the restorations. So uh, I tried in uh, the last uh, 45 minutes, one hour, I'm not sure, to try to summarize to you some specific uh, concepts, but I think those concepts are very important. And uh, these are concepts that everyone can apply to the everyday uh, implant cases. Uh, for me, I use oxygen before the surgeries, during my surgeries, and after for the patient to keep clean every day uh, the restorations and to control the bacteria. And again, why I prefer oxygen and I stopped using uh, chlorexidine products because it's the same effective and at the same time, it has no side effects. Not only that, those products, they have inside other components like lactoferrin and we know that lactoferrin has anti-inflammatory effects and also it can assist uh, the healing of the soft and the hard tissues. So that's the point, that's my uh, take home message. Why I use oxygen? Because it works instantly. It is not only disinfecting, but also it is enhancing the healing of the soft and the hard tissues kills bacteria, it removes 
any necrotic tissues, it is reducing post-operative pain and inflammation. Very important, there is no resistance. It doesn't disturb the normal flora. It doesn't stain the teeth. It doesn't alter the taste. So we can use those products every day as many times as we want. It works instantly and has no side effects. So that's what I want to talk to you about. Of course, there are many different concepts that we could uh, talk here and discuss for many, many hours or may, maybe days. That's my email. And this is also uh, my Facebook uh, page. Take a picture of uh, this slide and you can follow me. You can follow on our Facebook uh, pages and also on our Blue M uh, Facebook page, all those cases and you can see more information and ask us uh, whatever you want. So uh, thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Minas, for a beautiful presentation. Thank you. Tatiana, your uh, no. co-host. Yes. Let's start here. Early morning in Brazil. Good morning. Yeah, can you see my 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 yes. presentation? Yes. Yes. yes? Okay. Okay. Good morning for all. I'm here in Brazil. Uh, I'm Professor Tatiana Deliberador. I'm Master MPGG in Periodontics. I have more than 150 published articles, and I'm currently professor at Latin American Institute of Dental Research and education in Curitiba, Brazil. Science uh, 202, I'm a private practice in periodontology and oral implantology. Let me see here, the next slide, okay. Uh, it's a great pleasure for me to participate this webinar for India with Dr. Minas, Tessa and Johan. Uh, I want to say thank you to Blue and International and to all professor of the Department of Periodontics for Sabeda Dental College for the invitation. I'm a big fan of Blue and products because they really make a difference in oral health and tissue. Uh, let's start my presentation uh, with some researches, but first, it's important uh, we remember, uh, review, what is a healthy gingiva versus disease gingiva, according to a new classification of American uh, Academy of Periodontology. Here we have a, a, a table that we can see. In clinical periodontal health, do not have or may have a minimal bleed on proben. Uh, to have normal gingival so-called death, normal bone highs, and we have controlled modified factors and controlling predisposing factors. Uh, uh, when we have gingival virus, these parameters change. And we have now, uh, bleed on proben, that is the main uh, sign of disease. And we have uh, normal sucos and normal bone high and may be present controlled uh, modified factors and predisposing factors. Uh, and it's important uh, remember too that Gene virus is, it could be present in, in, in intact periodontal or reduced periodontal. Well, let's see the study, the first study that I done by me and my team in Brazil. Effects of uh, oxygen toothpaste and supragingival biofilm reduction. The present study was based on experimental gingivitis model proposed by Lee. It's a similar methodology. 
Here we have the criteria, the inclusion criteria, that is dentistry study students with age between uh, 18 and 35 years, with minimal of uh, 28 teeth. Oh, sorry, come back. Uh, presence of pre-established gingivitis, probin depth is smaller than three millimeters, attachment loss is smaller than two millimeters, and overall with good health. Uh, all participants receive a soft uh, toothbrush, toothbrush, and here we have the methodology. The students were divided in two groups. The first group is group CT, uh, that after uh, developing gingivitis, eh, they brushed their teeth with Colgate toothpaste with triclosan. And the other group is the group Blue M, BM group, that they brush their teeth eh, after uh, development gingivitis with Blue M toothpaste. Uh, for results, we, we need three times re-examination, saliva simple collection, and evaluation with gingival and plaque index. And here we have the results. Uh, we observed that was a reduction in both gingival index and plaque index in both groups. It's similar. We don't have a statistical significant difference between them. And it's important to say that a total bacterial count sign significantly degrees, degreased in both groups too. Huh? And our conclusion was that both toothpaste, blue and or Colgate, are effective in controlling plague and controlling gingivitis. Now, for us, it's important conclusion. Both toothpaste work. Uh, next uh, research is about periodontitis, yeah? that which according to new classification, now we have uh, stages and grades. This study, uh, was conducted by Dr. Niveda and Dr. Kartikeyan. Uh, Dr. Kartikeyan is present here and uh, on the webinar. Doctor, it's a pleasure to present your, stu your study and your results here today. Uh, and this study uh, compare, this study compare the effect of oxygen release in oral gel and chlorhexidine gel in treatment of periodontitis. The patient were divided in two groups, group A and group B. In group A, uh, that blue and oral gel was applied to periodontal pockets after scaling and root planing. And the group B, the chlorhexidine gel was applied after, the period after scaling and root planing. And when we observe the results, we, uh, uh, the result shows the reduction of probing depth in both groups. But the conclusion is that group A, blue end group, show better potential in reduction probing depth. It showed that oxygen therapy is an important adjuvant in treatment, in treatment of periodontitis. For me, it's a very good study and important study for treatment uh, of periodontitis. Uh, just a remember, huh? uh, uh, the, the blue foam gel, uh, release high levels of ac active oxygen in a slow and control controlled manner, and it's help healing. 
Uh, the third research that I want to show uh, was conducted by me and my team in Brazil. And this research is about uh, application of blue N versus chlorexidine in Porphyromonas gingivalis, né? that one, the bacteria of the red complex. This is an in vitro study, and there were four groups. Look here blue M gel at 100%, blue M gel at 75%, and blue M gel at 50%. And the other group is chlorexidine 0.12%. Uh, in a petri dish, the bacteria were cultured and the product was applied. And the results were surprising because the blue N at 100% in inhibit the bacteria growth. Right? And here our conclusion that blue N work to inhibit the, 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 the growth of Porphyromonas gingivalis. The other research uh, also shows the effect of oral gel versus chlorexidine in biofilm. Now, uh, it's not only the effect only one bacteria, but in the, the complex the complex biofilm. Yeah? This study was conduce, conducted by Dr. Jamil and your team here in Brazil. Uh, and the conclusion, we have a very good and excellent results too, showing that blue M uh, is effect, 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 effective to controlling the biofilm, not only with uh, Porphyromonas gingivalis, but in all bacteria in that had in red complex. Well, let's start now with uh, some clinical cases. The first clinical cases is about treatment of periodontitis, uh, localized back periodontitis. During orthodontical treatment, uh, the, the patient uh, have uh, uh, a periodontitis here in this style of the kinin. This, the, the, this case uh, was conducted by me and my college, Dr. Marcelo Iman. The diagnosis was localized periodontitis with 14 millimeters probing depth. Here, we can see in this picture. The treatment plan was uh, sub and supra gingival scaling and Root planing, and immediately we uh, apply the blue oil, the blue N oral gel, né? application of blue N oral gel inside the pocket. This is the first application, and the gel was maintained inside the periodontal pocket, and patient uh, went home. Uh, on the second day. Uh, the patient returns only to receive the second application of gel inside the pocket. Yeah? The third day, the patient come and we do the same thing. Yeah? Uh, the patient received the gel inside the pocket. And here we have uh, the, the follow-up after 30 days with, uh, we can see here, the excellent result was obtained. The periodontal pocket reduced from 14 millimeters to three millimeters and uh, 30 days, the follow-up. Uh, uh, this clinical case uh, gave me the Keep Opinion Leader War in, in 2000. 19. Eh? 
it's a big big pleasure to me receive this 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 work and now né, the blue m is promoting a new contest uh, which can you uh, go to europeo in dinamarca visit here the website né, and look the the rules and participate it uh, submission né, your clinical case until february february 28 well let's go uh, the second second clinical case uh, is about the treatment uh, of young female patient diagnosed with periodontitis stage 4 grade c on radiographic, we can observe the loss of some teeth, condemned teeth, uh, and presence of extensive bone loss. The patient reports that she did not want to lose any more teeth. Uh, clinically, we have periodontal pockets of four to nine millimeters and all sites with bleed on probing and attachment loss. The treatment was supra and subgingival scaling and root planing. And again, we apply the blue end gel inside the pocket immediately after uh, scaling and root planing. Uh, we recommend keep oral gel inside the pocket. Né? This is a recommendation, it's not a protocol. Uh, we, we, do, we do this form here in our patient, in, in our office and our, our university. Uh, the patient also receive né? oral hygiene instruction, it's very important, and all patient uh, in, uh, né? We indicate the use of toothpaste and mouthwash in home. Uh, the patient returned the next day, uh, on the second day, and we application of oral gel again. And we can see here in this picture, picture the second day. Huh? Então, uh, the, 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 the gel né, keep inside the pocket. The patient come back in the third day and again receive the application of oral gel. And the gel always keep inside the periodontal pocket. And patient come back in four T days. Uh, we can look here the health tissue appearance only with 40 days. And again, the Ooh. patient receive the application of oral gel. We have a, a lot of a, a, a good results. Né? This is a last app application of oral gel. And so this is our recommendation. We apply three or four times uh, day after day uh, after a scaling and root planing. Here we have the reevaluation uh, after 45 days and we can see health periodontal tissue and good oral hygiene. This is our result. And here we have the follow-up with six days. Né? The patient don't have more bleed on probing. The periodontal pockets uh, have been reduced. And note that periodontal tissue is very healthy. This is excellent results. We associated the 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 root planing, né, scaling and root planing, more application of oral gel. Uh, the next case is about the use of gel, oral, the blue and oral gel, and the treatment of 
furcation defect. And in this case, we use the gel and we do the gyne tissue re regeneration. Uh, here in this picture, uh, show the tooth 36, uh, three months after scaling and root planing. Uh, and we decide to do the guide tissue regeneration at this moment. Here, the, in the, the moment of the surgery, uh, after full thickness flap eh, and hoot scaling, we do the confirmation of the presence of class two furcation defect. After that, the, we do the application uh, of oral gel with the objective of performing chemical decontamination. Yeah. The gel is maintained uh, about two or three minutes and then it's, it was removed with saline solution. Furcation defect, now it it's, was filled with bone graft. Here we use BioOS. And our option is to do a connective tissue graft as used as membrane. And after the flap was sutured in coronal position. And here we have the results. After six months of follow-up, uh, we have uh, man, the probing shows that have less than one millimeter of horizontal bone loss and the radiographically there was bone formation uh, inside the furcation defect. Here we have before and after uh, the treatment. I think we achieved an uh, excellent result uh, in this case. Our 40 clinical case, uh, let's, uh, let's talk about periodontitis. And we know that the diagnosis of periodontitis, né, we, need, we, we need have change in the pairing plants of the tissue, increasing probing pocket depths, and progressive bone loss. Yeah? Uh, in absence of initial radiographic and probing depths, radiographic evidence of bone level uh, greater than three millimeters and or probing depths greater than six millimeters in con conjunction with profuse bleeding represents periodontitis. Né? It's this according of a new classification. Here, uh, we, we diagnosed, uh, the, the periodontitis diagnostic was né? bone level greater than three millimeters and probe and depth greater than six millimeters. Our treatment plans was surgical treatment for periodontitis with mechanical decontamination, chemical decontamination and guide bone re regeneration. Let's see. Uh, after full flap thickness, uh, after full thickness flap, né, the mechanical decontamination uh, was do it and removing uh, all granulation tissue with curates. And after that, the bicarbonate jet uh, was applied. Uh, after the mechanical decontamination, we use blue and oral gel to chemical decontamination. In this case, uh, we apply oral gel and oral gel stay uh, in the, 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 the region for, uh, for five minutes. After that, now here we look the, the, the gel in the region, now look the bubbles. Uh, we can see the bubbles. Now oxygen begin releasing. It's happened uh, seconds after the application. Uh, after we 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 wash it, the saline solution, 
uh, the washed gel with saline solution. And in this case, we apply again the blue end gel and the blue end gel stay there for five minutes. It was chosen to apply two times because the area was very contaminated. But again, this is not a protocol. It's our, our recommendation. We can apply only one time or two times if you were prefer. The gel, again, uh, was washed with saline solution. And now the region was discontaminated. It's very important to treatment of periodontitis, decontaminated uh, the region. Né? And now we do the guide bone regeneration. Here we use again the, the bone graft, BIOS bone graft, and we associate it with, um, with PRF membranes. And here we have the flap suture in coronal position. And in this case, uh, in the last uh, two cases, uh, we used, we, we indicate, né? the oral gel as an auxiliar method in decontamination. Uh, for me, the use uh, for this indication is perfect. And why? Né? It's, we have uh, excellent results and it's perfect to use to decontamination. Uh, uh, how can I say? Uh, because the, 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 the products of Luen have a secret. Né? Uh, it, they are slow release of oxygen. And how is the, the, the sources of the oxygen? The sources is two, honey and sodium perborate, uh, as already explained. Né? And what is the function of honey in formula. The, the honey né, uh, has a secret, the work of bees. And it's secret work of bees that produce this enzyme called GOX. And both uh, GOX and sodium perborate uh, when in contact with water converted in H2O2. And here, uh, is, uh, and here né, is the source of oxygen and blue end products. And the whole of oxygen and wood healing is already proven and talk here. Né? Oxygen is present in all phases of healing. And we, when, né, we can see in this picture, the oxygen is very important to wood healing. And when we have a wound, we have a hypoxia. And at this time, it's necessary supplementary oxygen repair. And this moment, né, the blue end product is very important. And the blue end product, product is easy method and topical application. This is fantastic. Né? Topical application with uh, oxygen releasing. Just a minute here. The, the, the next clinical case uh, is about uh, a good clinical case. We have here uh, a complication, né? uh, the flap descends four days after guide bone regeneration surgery. Né? Uh, the cause is tension in the, the suture. Just a minute here. In this case, uh, we Remove the necrotic tissue, first application. Yeah. 
and the patient receive uh, three application for 10 minutes each. No suture was performed, only application of blue and gel day after day. The, the patient come back to the office all day after day. Here and the, the third image, we can visualize the appearance of the tissue uh, only one day uh, post-operative. After two days here in the vestibular region, uh, there have a healthy tissue, eh? more alive and more vascularized soft aspect with migration of epithelium tissue. After three days, we have a good clinical evaluation. Eh? The, 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 the evaluation continues. And with six days, we have a significant clinical improvement of healing né? by second intention. <clears throat> and at uh, this improvement was observed day after day. We can see in this picture sequence. And in 16 days after, né? the wound was almost completely uh, epitalized, and in 21 days, the wound was closed né, with health per implant uh, tissue. Uh, so, clinically, we can see that blue and gel has an important function to improve healing. Uh, to this action, this action uh, stimulating revascularization, collagen migration, and angiogenesis. Uh, and here, uh, uh, now you can prove that uh, oral gel has this function to improve healing. Uh, and this research uh, that the objective is evaluated, uh, the local effect of slow oxygen release gel on the healing on standardized skin cause it in hex. Uh, this, re this research, né, a wand was made in dorsal region of the animals. The animals were divided in two groups, control group and test group. In the control group, the wand was treated only with saline solution. And the test group, the wound was treated uh, with daily application of blue and gel. Uh, the animals were sacrificed in different experimental times in order to perform the clinical and histological monitoring of wood healing. Here we have the results, the clinical and histological results. And for histological, re for clinical results, group T né, showed better healing in 10, 14, 21, and 28 days. The healing is more faster than control group. And here we have the histological results uh, that the group that received blue gel, the wound has more collagen and more blood vessels and then group then, then control group. Né? Look for the arrows. The arrows uh, shows more blood vessels, more collagen, and better healing. And here in this the same study, we have immunohistochemical results that shows more VEGF in group that was treated with blue M gel. What is it's what is in, it's important because we have more VEGF, we have more angiogenesis, and and this this result this results is very important because it's now proven that the oral gel has angiogenic action and stimulate the formation of collagen fibers. 
uh, this article is recently accepted for publication now in January. And the last clinical case that I show it to you um, uh, it's already published and the complete manuscript is available on Blue and Care website. In this case, uh, it was planned to perform the technique of free gingival graft in both sides in order to increase the keratinized gingiva. And it was decided to apply blue end gel just on the right side, both in the recipient bed and donor bed palette. Uh, here in this picture, it shows the recipient bed begin prepared. A partial thickness flap was performed to receive the free gingival graft from palette on both sides uh, was prepared equally. Uh, here in donor bed, two free gingival grafts were removed uh, of required size. Uh, here, the, the free gingival graft uh, already sutured. And immediately after the end of the surgery, both beds receive the application of blue, blue, blue and oral gel. Now, here we observe the, the donor bed. Uh, after a few minutes, now, the bubbles, now look the bubbles releasing, now, begin releasing the, the oxygen. I love this picture. And patient come back after Ah, here, the oxygen apply in recipient bed eh? and patient go home. And after three days, patient come back. Uh, and here in the right side, it's possible to see that we have uh, a, better, a better healing. Uh, on this day, the patient uh, received the silicone plate to facilitate the maintenance of blue and gel after application. Uh, here, the, the patient with, with silicone plates and blue and uh, ap applied only on the, the right side. And the patient applied uh, once a day the, the, the oral gel and used the mouthwash too. After 10 days, uh, the patient uh, come back and here uh, we have better healing and the patient talk uh, less pain reported for us and the right side. Um, in the recipient bed with 10 days post-operative, uh, we can see that we have lower inflammation in the right side in compared to the left side. And after five months, we observe that the right side uh, uh, have more keratinized gingiva that compare with the left side. And blue and gel stimulate Vaginal yeah. fibers and neogenesis and uh, lead uh, uh, a, a formation more keratinized uh, gingiva. Um, well, with this case, uh, I'm finalize my presentation, but first uh, let's see uh, a video. What's happened? Oh my God, no, work it. This is our story. This is our soul. Our average lifespan is 80 years. There was life before us and there will be life after us. Our lives represent only a fraction of the total time. There are only two ways to live your life. 
One is as though nothing is a miracle. The other is as though everything is a miracle. We live as though everything is a miracle. Nature, breath, oxygen, heartbeat, love, sunrise, birth. To us, life is a miracle. Oral health, the window to our overall health. Our mouth is the entry point to our digestive, respiratory, and nervous system, and therefore crucial for the quality and quantity of our lives. We are Blue M, a leading oral health brand. We elevate health and well-being through oral care. We create revolutionary oral care essentials for day-to-day -day life. We have a 10-year-plus proven track record supplying dental professionals, setting a whole new standard in the industry. Today, our award-winning products are available in over 50 countries worldwide, benefiting us and the world we live in. Elevate life at bluemcare.com. It's a beautiful video. Thank you very much for your attention. Here uh, is my contact. And sorry, my English is not so good. Uh, and the, the Facebook community invite you to uh, participate with Blue M. Thank you very much for the invitation. Thank you, Tatiana. Beautiful uh, lecture. Beautiful cases, nice research. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not sure if we have any questions. No, I don't think so. Um, is there anything else where you want to say, Dr. Uh, Karin Kayam? If I say it pronounced as well. Or shall we just uh, end the session? There is only one uh, question. Oh, yeah. No, okay. A colleague is asking if uh, we can scan the scan bodies instead of taking impressions, probably with uh, the customized abutments. Mm -hmm. yeah, yes, definitely. We can do the same with a digital impression. Okay. It's possible. Yeah. Um, any more questions? Yeah, recording has been made, so uh, we can. Uh, you can also watch it on uh, on our YouTube channel, uh, and else uh, on uh, Facebook. And I think uh, all people who registered will get a link to the recording as well. All right. Yeah, this is uh, Dr. Jayakumar from Savita Dental College. Hello. So yeah, that was a nice presentation. And from healing to perio and then periodon, peri implantitis. It is a very versatile material. First time I'm seeing right from uh, experimental studies and to clinical studies. It has been a wonderful material. And uh, we at Savita, we are looking forward to having some collaboration and uh, start using this material. I'm quite impressed by the presentation. My connection better. I'm quite impressed by the material and the presentation. Okay, okay. Able to hear me? No, 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 no. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. Yeah, no, I am okay. quite impressed by the material and the presentation. Right from so we are we are looking forward to using it more and Maybe we can um, work together. Yes, there's a lot of interest in that. Yeah, nice, yeah. Yeah, nice yeah. results. Yeah. So yeah, we can start a lot of collaborations with different universities. Yeah, yeah, sure. It'd be really yes. nice, yeah. yeah. Hey, any other questions from chat box we can address? Um, how, 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 how do I keep the gel in the pocket when a patient does come in home? Come this, oh, sorry. How do I keep the gel in the pocket when a patient does this at home? Minas, will you reply that one, or Tatiana? I don't know if it's possible for the patient to apply the gel directly in the pocket. 
uh, at home because um, only if we could provide him with a syringe to, to do this, but it's not very easy. Uh, what we are doing is we instruct the patient to, to massage, to rub the soft tissues uh, with the gel and then with the floss or with the interdental brush to, to push the gel to go in between the, the teeth and as far as inside the soft tissues. But it's good that the oxygen has, is penetrating the soft tissues. So it will go around four millimeters inside the soft tissues. But uh, for the patient to deliver it directly uh, deeply into the pocket, uh, I don't think it's possible. Patient can apply in home too with a syring uh, on the, the outside of pocket. Yeah, just the outside. Yeah, the oxygen will penetrate it, I guess, anyway. I think these were the questions. Uh, I don't see any new one coming up, so. Yep. All right. Once again, thank you, Tatiana and Minas, for these uh, wonderful lectures. Thank you. Thank you so much for invitation. And uh, thank you. It was a pleasure. Yeah. And let's keep in contact about uh, the next following up research what, and how we can work together. Yeah. A big thanks from India. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Look forward right. to working with you. All right. You. We, keep, we keep in touch. Uh, yeah, sure. Have a great day. Yeah. Bye bye. Have a great day for us. For, for all. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Tatiana. Thank you, Minas. Thank you all. Bye bye. Thank you. Goodbye.